Hey, Tommy, how are you? Good, and yourself? I'm doing okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, everything that's going on in college football. And uh, I'll start with the We Want to Play, uh, led by Trevor Lawrence, among others. Uh, what's your take on that? Where do you come out on, uh, on that whole situation? Right, I mean, as you can see, uh, the college athletes have been doing a lot of uh, stuff on social media, as far as that on Twitter and Instagram. Um, as far as other college athletes, I mean, everyone, a lot of people support them, uh, more like a family, you know, how it is with players. Um, they support anything they go through, uh, but at the same time, everybody has their own decision to make. There's a lot on the line here uh, for a lot of people. Some people have some real personal decisions, and uh, we stand with our players. And, you know, you, you all have the right to make your own decision. Um, where do you stand? Do you want to play? Or are, you, are you still thinking about uh, possibly opting out this year? I'm here to play. I'm here to play football, but for the guys that do opt out or are on the fence, I mean, that's their decision. Um, as a team, we respect them and support them fully throughout their whole thing because you know, there's a lot of things that go into that decision. That's not an easy decision to make to say that you're not going to play this college football season. Um, you know, it's something that guys have probably never been able to express. Some people are going through different things, but at the end of the day, we support them, whatever they do. One quick last one. What would it take for you to change your mind on that? Nothing as of right now. It would have to be something pretty impossible, but we'll see. Thanks, Tommy. Good luck. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Brad Klein. Brad? Hey, Tommy. How are you? Good. And yourself? Can't complain. Thanks for taking the time. I'm, I'm curious just to follow up on that. Have you been in contact with other players from other schools that are kind of heading this we want to play movement? Yes, I have. Um, as far as players in the ACC, yes. Uh, as far as other conferences, I've not. Um, you know, it's kind of like anything else. They want to come together. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on. This has been a hectic year, to say the least. And just to show the unity that we have in each other and to show that we're pushing for something that we want, I uh, support it. So how have, that, how have those conversations go? I'm not going to ask you to name names. I'm sure you're not at liberty to do so. But I know this on Twitter, for example, you haven't posted what guys like Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields had that prepared statement from the We Want to Play movement. So uh, what have those conversations been like between you and other players? Right. I mean, social media, social media. Some people post, some people don't. I put out a tweet yesterday explaining um, that our team is going to be ready no matter what happens. Because at the end of the day, players are not in control. There is a – the NCAA is in control as far as the conferences. So um, just letting everyone know that we are prepared for whatever happens next, whether it be a season this year, in the spring, or even next year. We're going to be ready. And, you know, we don't have a say in that. So we're ready for whatever happens. Thanks, Tommy. And, Mike, if it's okay, can I ask one more quick question? Uh, Brad, I got quite a few people in front of you, so I'm going to have to pass on that for now. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Mario from News Channel 9. Mario, go ahead. Tommy, good to see you, man. Uh, obviously, everything going on. Why do you feel that you guys could play this year? Everyone talks about, oh, you might be the safest being in that bubble that you guys are, are in, being on campus. Why do you feel that you guys are safe enough to play a college football season? Right. Personally, I feel safe just because of the protocol and the standards that the Syracuse coaching staff and medical staff have set. Um, very strict. And personally, I'm happy with that, that it is that strict because that shows that there's no leniency to anyone or anything that's going on because of how serious this virus is and everything that's going on. So for them to be able to make a stand and have everything in order for us makes me feel very comfortable. When you had those meetings, though, before you didn't practice for the first two days, was it more about the safety measures or, or why, why did you guys feel that you had to come together and not practice those two days? Right. I will tell you it's about the safety, but in the end, uh, that was a player's meeting, and we were going to keep that between all the players. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Brent Axe from Syracuse.com. Hey, Tommy. Thanks for doing this. I wanted – am I unmuted? Yeah. I wanted to ask – COVID is one thing, and dealing with this has been obviously huge, but – you posted something on your social media. It's actually pinned there right now about comparing the off season you went through last year when there was a lot of hype and a lot of excitement versus this year when maybe it's been a little quieter. Can you just kind of contrast the off season and the preparation last year versus this year? Right. I mean, we prepared like any other last year, but obviously there's a lot going on with the media and I don't want to say people brought into that, but it was definitely there. So this year to have that difference of no one around you, like I said, the doubts, 
the loss is everything that is expected of us. You know, it's just, it's us against us at the end of the day. And we were mentally prepared for that going into this. And a quick follow-up is you, you were discussing what you were comfortable with, with the procedures and everything. What, what concerns you? What worries you when the players get together and, and have concerns? What are those concerns? My only concern is my brothers on my team, if they were concerned with something. I personally feel comfortable with everything that is going on, but if one of them do not feel comfortable, then I'm going to try to help that out in any way possible and make sure that they do feel comfortable. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Stephen Bailey from Syracuse.com. Hey, Tommy, hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to kind of ask you about uh, the leadership council that Dino kind of called. I know you're on it. I think Service and Cisco, I, I apologize if I'm missing anyone. What's it been like to have those conversations with those guys? And uh, how, how, I guess, how hard is it to try and represent a room of like 105 people when, like you said, everyone has these different experiences? Um, what's that, what's that kind of been like for you? And, and how have you and the rest of that leadership council worked to? I guess, represent them fairly. Right. Um, it's very empowering uh, and it's very eye-opening at the same time because, you know, a lot of players come from a lot of different backgrounds. So when us as a leadership council are standing up in front of them and listening to what's going on in their heads, you know, some people, I might not be able to relate to some people's stories and what they've been through and, you know, explain their feelings about this season, everything that's going on. But there is somebody on the council that, can relate to them. That's the reason for having the council is because the council represents the player's voice. And when we speak to Coach Babers, when we speak to him as a council, that is us speaking for the team. So I think that the council is very important and the team being honest with the council is very important, but it's hard for the council because we have to word everything to coach in order that he understands it to get the whole vibe of the team. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, just to follow up, I know um, a couple, I guess, results of those meetings have been made clear. John Wildtack put out a statement and um, said the school is going to test twice a week in season and encourage the ACC to do the same. What else, if anything, are you guys looking for from John or from Kent Siverud as they go to the ACC and, and they try and find a way to, to play this season? You know, just more uh, health and safety things, just making sure, trying to push for everything to be equal. You know what I mean? As far as making sure the whole ACC is on board with everything and Make sure all the teams are unified. Thanks, Tommy. Yeah. We'll go to Adam Hillman from the Daily Orange. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Tommy. How's it going? Good. And yourself? Pretty good. Um, so I want to talk about that statement last night. So can you walk us through that decision-making process, and why is it something that you felt like you had to release? I wouldn't say it's something that I felt like I had to release, something that I wanted to do. Um, the past couple of days, you know, seeing everything on Twitter and, and Instagram, you know, of other players just posting the same thing over and over again. And from getting the vibe of the team, talking to coaches, talking to friends and family, um, I felt that I wanted to post something. I wasn't sure exactly at the time what I wanted to do. So I took a couple days and got my thoughts together. And I didn't want to pick a side of any part. I didn't want to say we don't want to play because there's guys on the team that do and don't, which is respect, which we respect. Um, and I don't want to 100% say that everything's okay and we want to play. So I made it said that, our team is going to be ready no matter what happens. Whether we play now in the fall, or we play in the spring, or we play next fall, whenever that upcoming season is, we're locked in mentally, and we're here physically to put all the work in and be ready for that. Mm. And you know, if, say, the fall season is postponed to the spring, you know, how do you stay mentally locked in? How do you stay prepared? Like, what do you have to do? How do you, you know, as a leader on the team, how do you do that? Right, it's like anything else. It's almost like having your retreat year all over again. So it's really just being locked in and knowing the common goal in the end. You have to remember what you're here for and what you ultimately want to do and what you want to accomplish as a team. And you relay that message by leadership and examples and, you know, just pushing everyone to the fullest. Right, thanks, Tommy. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Nico Tamirian from CNY Central. Nico, go ahead. There we go. How you doing, Tommy? Good, and yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. I just want to ask, you know, obviously camping a few days in now, but I think today would be the third practice. How are you guys approaching all this with that kind of cloud hanging over the season when you hear about other leagues and whatnot? Does that affect you guys out there? How do you hit the practice field with all that going on? We attack it with full intensity, like we're playing a game September 12th, I believe is the date of the first game against North Carolina, I believe I saw. So we're attacking that with the same mindset until we're told otherwise.
All right, thanks, Nico. Next, we'll go to Nate Ming from Syracuse.com. Nate, go ahead. Tommy, thanks, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm wondering what has Brad Pike or the school's medical officials expressly or directly told you guys at this point? What risks have you been appraised of when you go out there and play? I mean, it's like anything else. We know we know the risk that goes on. Obviously, not to the fullest because it is a new virus and medical team and across the country and across the world are still trying to figure out things out with it. So nothing's 100%. But as of right now, in Syracuse right now at the university, we are the safest I feel like we would ever be because when I'm home, I'm not getting tested every other week and I'm not getting my temperature taken every single day and to make sure that I don't have symptoms and getting checked on from the training staff. So that's a part of it. I feel safe here and comfortable being at school. How, how often have you heard from Brad Pike at this point, and have you heard directly from Chancellor Severud? Uh, yes, we're, we're in constant communication with Brad Pike, but personally, no, I have not had any contact with the Chancellor. Thanks. Next, we'll go to Anthony from the Daily Orange. Anthony, go ahead. Kind of piggybacking off of what, uh, what Nate just said, there was a report uh, in ESPN today that there were multiple Big Ten athletes who were suffering uh, from myocarditis as a result of the, of the COVID. Has, has that something that's come up in conversations with, with trainers and, and who is giving you the information ultimately on, on potential COVID complications and, and assessing the risk? Right. Uh, personally, no, I haven't. We have not uh, spoken about what's been going on with those Big Ten athletes. Um, I did think I saw something about it a couple of days ago on to go on Twitter, on Twitter, on Twitter, but uh, about that specifically. But as far as other concerns, yes, we've brought it up with the medical staff and the training and the trainers, and uh, they've been very helpful in that aspect of it. And, and heading to Dean's comment about being in the, in the final four for testing, how, how has that worked for you guys um, in terms of being able to manage to fully have practice and not have to shut it down like other uh, schools have? That's a huge personal advantage I feel like we have. Uh, personally, thankfully, I was not any of the guys that got shut down. Um, I was good to go the whole way since we've been here since June 8th, I want to say, the day we came back, sometime in June. So to be able to get all that, uh, all the workouts in and staying on top of my medical health was something that uh, I took strongly, and I was happy that I was able to do that here. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. We'll go to Danny from the Daily Orange. Danny, go ahead. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, hey, Tommy. Um, what do you envision a spring football season potentially looking like? And what concerns might you have, if any, in potentially playing basically two seasons in a calendar year? I have no idea how they would uh, operate a spring football season. I don't know if it would just be like spring ball, but playing football games. I assume that's how it would be, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know how they would work it to play a season and then cut, turn around, start training again, and then play another season. I'm not sure exactly how that would work, um, but I hope if they do come out with some kind of decision soon that they would have a plan for us so the athletes are not left in the dark. And Tommy, we got time for one more question. So we're going to circle back to Nico. He didn't get a chance to ask his follow up. So Nico, go ahead. Hey, Tommy, thanks again. Um, the follow up to the question I was asking earlier, as far as, you know, you know, trying to go forward business as usual with everything going on. Have you been in contact with any players outside of the Syracuse football program as far as, you know, whether it's bouncing ideas or whether it's just seeing how everything is and uh, again, just basically been in touch with guys at other programs on maybe how to best approach things or what you guys as a collective unit of players want to do with this going forward? Right. Um, me personally, I've talked to a lot of players amongst the ACC just because I feel like that is the most relevant because that's the conference we play in and that's what we're ultimately worried about. Um, so really just picking each other's brains, hearing what their coaches might be saying to them or what our coach is saying to us, and really just piggybacking back and forth just to get on the same page with everything to make sure that everything is moving forward. Thanks so much, man. All right, Chris, thanks for joining us. All right, thank you for having me. Good, you're there.
All right, Chris, how this is going to work is uh, we're going to take questions for 15 minutes. We'll get to as many as we can. I'll introduce the individual asking the question. They'll ask you <laughs> their question and one follow-up, and we'll just keep moving on down the line, okay? All right. All right, we'll start first with uh, Mark Larson from Spectrum News. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Chris, nice to see you. Uh, uh, can, can you just kind of start with, uh, you know, your, your season opener is supposed to be a month from tomorrow and how much confidence you have with everything going on that you guys are actually going to play that game? Well, right now we're just taking it day by day. You know, we're seeing we're seeing everything that everybody else is seeing with a lot of a lot of different conferences up and out of the season and things like that. And all we can do right now is just keep our focus on that first game and and until they cut us off, just treat treat every day like this a normal day and, and treat every day like we're going to play that game. And just wanted to follow that up with uh, you know considering the low numbers that apparently you guys are uh, turning out as far as positive tests. And nobody is telling us what that number is, but the, your coach loves it. Considering that, how, how disappointed would you guys all be uh, if you're not able to play this year because of maybe some things other teams aren't doing? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it will be disappointed, but knowing that it's out of our can, control, we can only control that we, what we can control. So we'll be disappointed if there's no season, but it's just like, hey, now we got to work towards next year. Thanks, Chris. Stay healthy. Yeah, thank you. Next, we'll go to Brad Klein. Brad, go ahead. Hey, Chris, how you feeling? I'm good. Good to hear. Um, a lot of this um, talk about playing during a global pandemic, a lot of people are saying that it kind of jeopardizes what a lot of people are calling the illusion of amateurism. What do you think about that, about uh, calling student athletes amateurs, even though they're playing during a pandemic, and it is a risk? Well, that's something that's, you know, been going on a long time, like that title being on, on college athletes. And, you know, I don't really look at it that way. I just look at it like, hey, I'm here to do one thing, really two, get my degree and play football and just take that wherever it may take me. And I don't really let that amateurism define me or define my place. So I really don't look at it as like, oh, I'm looked at as an amateur or anything like that. You get what I'm saying? No, I understand. But, I mean – and thank you for answering the question that way, but just to follow up, is there anything else that the NCAA should be doing, uh, maybe in terms of compensation, maybe not, just to kind of address the fact that you guys are not getting paid and you're still playing a contact sport during a pandemic? Yeah, you know, that is that is a big concern. Like guys saying like, hey, we do want more money and things like that. I feel that yeah, we should we should get a little more money, you know, especially taking the three months off that we did. Like a lot of people's family had to compensate for that time at us being home that we're usually not home for. So like parents were spending a lot more money with food and travels and things like that due to the fact that we were home. So just giving us a little more money on that on that aspect of helping our family, I would be definitely appreciated. Chris, good luck with the season. Thanks for taking the time and stay safe, okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to Adam Hillman from the Daily Orange. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good. So a lot of NFL players, you know, especially like Russell Okung, Juwan James, you know, they've been opting out because they're worried about the spread of COVID in close proximities. And, you know, a lot of these guys in the trenches, you know, offensive, defensive line, they're worried about that. You know, as someone who's a fullback and tight end, you know, if you play defensive line, is this something that frightens you? And, and what are your thoughts about that? I mean, it's, it's something that is definitely a concern, but it's like I can't live my life in fear, you know. Like, if, I, if, if something happens to me, God forbid, if something happens to me, then it happens. But, like, all I can do is go out there and just play until I'm told not to play anymore. And, um, and uh, sorry, one second. Um, so, like, have you, have you had any considerations of opting out or have you talked to anybody else's considerations of opting out, you know, or – I mean, it's definitely a thought that I ran across my mind, you know, especially especially early on in camp. Like, I was just like, uh, is this something I really want to go through, especially my last year? And, you know, just like talking over my family and things like that. Like, we're, 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 we're all for it until I'm told I can't play no more. All right. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Next, we'll go to Nico Chimerian from CMI Central. Nico, go ahead. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good. It's a similar question to the one you were just asked, but a, but a slightly different one. 
the idea of going out there, playing football, doing what you love, but obviously balancing that with all the risks that you're aware of with the virus and things that we're not sure may be lingering effects about it and things like that. How do you balance that? How do you balance that love of the game with the inherent risk that 2020 football does, you know, take on this year? Yeah, I'll, I'll say this. It definitely takes a toll on your mind when you go out there, you play football, you go, you come back from practice and you see like another story has dropped about something COVID related, especially with the football season. And you're just like, you're, you're up in, like you're up in the air about it. Like, oh, wow, the Big Ten just did this. The Pac-12 just did this. And it's just like, well, what's the ACC going to do and this and that? And then it's just like, all right, you turn around and you got to go to practice. So it's just kind of like, it's up in the air right now. So like, like my mind is definitely everywhere about it. And I'm just trying to take it day by day and just hopefully we come to a result and find out if we're going to be able to play this season and hopefully finish it. Thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate that. Yep. Next we'll go to Brent Axe, turkeys.com. Brent, go ahead. Hi, Chris. Uh, I asked Tommy the same question. I want to get your thoughts on it. Dealing with COVID's obviously just consumed everybody's life and, and, and everything you guys are trying to deal with. But that aside, you went through an off season last year where there was a lot of hype and build up and excitement about the team. This year's probably been a little quieter in that department. Can you kind of compare last off season and preparing for that kind of season versus this year, COVID aside, expectations only? Yeah, I think a lot of guys are, are, are controlling what they can control and working a lot harder than last year. You know, like last year, we, we let that 10 and three season get to our head. And, and obviously we went out and didn't have a good season like we wanted to last year. So like, I feel like a lot more guys are humble this year and like, and putting their chains in their chest and really working it to make sure that like what happened last year doesn't happen again. Is there somebody on the team, or maybe not even on the team, but somebody that's really inspired you to say, hey, look, I want to play this game through everything. I want to be out there. There was a video that was circulating. A player from Ohio State gave a pretty emotional speech to his team. Is there somebody like that within your team that's make you said, you know what, I I'm going to play all this other stuff aside? Uh, not really anybody on my team. I would say more of my family. You know, just seeing the predicament that, like, my family and I are in, I, I just like, hey, I need this season. It's my last season. You know, this, is, this could be a make or break for me to see whether I go to the next level or not. Thank you. Yep. Next, we'll go to Stephen Bailey, Syracuse.com. Stephen, go ahead. Hey, Chris. I uh, hope you're doing all right. I, I kind of wanted to ask about uh, Friday is when the NCAA Division One is supposed to basically give out the eligibility plan for anyone who opts out. Um, you said you considered opting out early on. Uh, you talk about your senior year. I'd imagine a lot of guys are wondering, you know, guys who've used a redshirt potentially, well, if I opt out, <laughs> do I get my fifth year back or do I not? Uh, how prominent is that eligibility, kind of that, that lack of understanding right now in your discussions with teammates? And um, how important do you think, I guess, that vote will be Friday toward determining how many guys want to play this year? I think that it'd be important for a lot of guys, especially a lot of guys who's in their fifth year who already had their red shirt season. So it's like, if guys are in their fifth year that want to opt out, if their eligibility is not going to be held up for next year, then it's like, well, now it's like, if I opt out, now I just got to worry about working out and just going straight to the league from that point. But like, if, if their eligibility would be sustained for next season, I think that like a lot more guys would not consider opting out, but would think about it, you know, just like, and then go over with their families and just hopefully nobody does opt out. But like, if, if that does happen, then, you know, it's just, it's just a decision on their part. Sure. Um, just to kind of follow up. So Dino basically said uh, there are guys, he used the word pending on the team, who I assume are, are either undecided or they, they haven't come forward with their decision to potentially opt out. What's it been like kind of behind the scenes in the locker room, having those conversations with people and, you know, within those conversations, what's it, I guess, been like to try and put yourself in the shoes of people who have all different kinds of, you know, uh, sets of circumstances that relate to why they might decide to play or not play? Yeah, from a team, from a teammate standpoint, all I can do is just respect their decision, you know, like listen to what they have to say, listen to their reasons, you know, just at the end of the day, like they're making decisions as grown men that they feel is best for them and their family and their future. So all I can do as a teammate is respect their decision and, to support them 100%. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Yep. Next, we'll go to Anthony from the Daily Orange. Anthony, go ahead. Hey, Chris. I uh, hope you're doing well. 
Uh, I wanted to ask a little bit about the, the team meetings you guys had last week after you guys chose to sit out practice. Uh, what were some of the health and safety concerns besides the testing that you guys kind of highlighted in that, in that, uh, in that meeting with Dino and then ultimately SU Athletics? That was really probably the overall thing, you know, like we know what we're doing on our end and just not having any idea what other teams are doing on their end. It, it concerned a lot of guys because guys are worried about going down somewhere else and like their testing protocols might not be the same as ours. And now they might have a guy who might be on the field with Corona and then they, and we could track this somehow. And then now we have it, we come back and then now it's, it's throughout the team. So that was probably the biggest concern in the team meeting. And was was Syracuse's game with Liberty at all mentioned? Uh, not at all. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Corey Spector, WAR. Go ahead, Corey. Hey, Chris. How are you? I'm good. I'm curious your thoughts about your concerns about contact tracing within the sport of football, considering that maybe one of your teammates contracts the virus during the season, and even though you're feeling well, that maybe you were lined up in close proximity to that person and yet you're feeling fine, but you might have to miss a game because of contact tracing. Yeah, that was definitely a big concern of mine. Like I said, with it, especially being my senior year, like that, that was definitely a concern. Like I don't want to miss any games because the games that I might miss could be a difference between, you know, me going to leave and me not going to leave. So that's definitely a big thing. And just throughout the locker room, we're preaching, you know, safe habits and just like, you know, stay, stay, stay at home. You know, don't be trying to go out and do extra things like that. Just make sure that, like, if if the season does get pulled, it's not on it's not on us because we did our job to make sure that we were safe and follow procedures and protocols. So it's just making sure that everybody on the team, you know, just staying accountable for each other. We'll go to Mario from News Channel Nine. Mario, go ahead. It's good to see uh, along those lines, everyone talks about <clears throat> these athletes being on campus might be the safest spot for them to be at compared to going back to their homes and, and you know, or, you know, being on campus. Do, do you guys feel that way? Do you feel that we're in the safest spot that we can be right now? So why not just play a college football season? Yeah, a few of, a few of us do feel that way. In my opinion, I definitely feel that way because it's like here is just – me going from home to the facility and it's just that, you know, like no in between, no trying to go out the way and go do anything extra. It's just home and facility and then football and that's it. Like as long as I'm not going nowhere else and I know that everybody in here is clean, like I feel safe. How hard has it been to to get down to practice? Coach Baber said this is the most focused that his team has been. What have you seen out of the guys? I know it's only your third day of practice now. I definitely seen a lot of guys locked in, you know, over oh, like getting spring canceled definitely set us back a lot. And just seeing guys come in and just and just staying laser focused and going through Zoom means over the spring and seeing that guys are really taking up the information and putting it to the field. Like I, I see that the guys are like taking this year serious under the circumstance that we're under. Thank you, Chris. Yep. All right, we got time for two more. We're going to go to Mark Larson first and then Nate Mink from Syracuse.com. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Chris, I'm sorry. I just can't stop thinking about this, but the quarantine has obviously had no impact on your hair. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever gotten a story with that. Uh, can you tell me uh, what's going on there? Yeah, uh, I, I usually don't get it done during the season because it'll, it'll mess up a lot and things like that. So I usually just, just look like a wild man. <laughs> Works for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Yep. All right, Nate, you got the last word. Go ahead with your question for Chris. Yeah, th thanks for doing this, Chris. I, I apologize. I'm just I I wanted to ask for a clarification. Um, you, you had said you were still kind of you said it earlier in camp you were on the fence about whether to proceed and, and play. Is that decision final in your mind yet? Like, are you committed to playing? Or are you still on the fence? I'm committed to playing until they pull the plug on me. Okay. And then what, what changed your mind or what convinced you? Um, it was really just, just really thinking about like, if I opt out, what, like, what, what would I do? You know, just like, I, I'll be going home back. Like right now going home really isn't an option for me. And it's like, with everything going on, cause I'm from Chicago, you know, with everything going on, like that's really not an option for me. Like, and that was really my biggest motivation with everything going on back home. Like, I don't want to go back home. I, I want to I go to 
I want to go somewhere else, go to the next level and just get out of Chicago and just not even think about that. Okay. And, and you know, I mean, you had the red shirt, you're still, you're only a true, a true senior here. That didn't, that didn't factor in, in your mind. It did, it did a little bit, you know, just like if I was the red shirt, I'll still be around the team, still be able to practice and things like that. I'll just have to sit out this year. So that definitely was, that definitely was more of my mindset rather than opting out was trying to use, was probably using my red shirt this year. All right. Thank you. Yep. All right, Chris. Thanks very much for your time today. Appreciate it.